tomato actually contains a natural molecule called lycopene. Okay, it's a carotenoid. Uh, it's what makes actually tomatoes red. And uh, uh, lycopene, when you actually pick a tomato off a vine and, and chew it and bite it, like and eat it like an apple or cut it into a salad, most of the lycopene is in a form that doesn't get really absorbed that well. You'll absorb 20% of it, 80% of it just go, goes out the chute below. Okay. But if you actually cook it, the tomato, the heat from cooking simmering tomatoes like tomato sauce will change that chemical structure into a form your body loves to absorb, like 85% absorption, which is exactly what we want for lycopene. Now, I took lycopene and I went to the lab and we tested in a system to see if it would stop those blood vessels from growing towards a tumor in the lab. And indeed, that's exactly what we found. Lycopene was a potent anti-angiogenic cancer starving molecule, okay? And really quite amazing. Um, uh, and in fact, there are research publishing publications on this. So I'm not the only person that's done it. I, I did the work back in 2010, two years later, other people replicated it. So this is a repeat um, uh, of the work that we had done. Very important, the British Journal of Nutrition, highly credible journal. Now, remember I told you rubber meets the road is actually what happens with people. And here we are, the health professionals follow-up study. It's a massive study, more than 40,000 men studied over 20 years. And they looked at nutrition and cancer outcomes. And what did they find? They found that those men who ate two to three servings of cooked tomatoes, that's tomato sauce, per week. Now, how, mu how much was a serving? Half a cup of cooked tomatoes. Okay, now think about it, tomato sauce. If I gave you only half a cup of tomato sauce for your pasta, you'd probably come back and ask me for a little bit more. All right, so not much. Again, readily attainable amounts of food. Eating tomatoes, tomato sauce with lycopene in a form you could absorb was associated in more than 40,000 men with a reduced risk in this study of developing prostate cancer by 30% by cutting off the blood supply to prevent cancers from actually growing up. And in fact, they looked at the people who did develop prostate cancer because look, 30% didn't get it, 70% did. They biopsied the prostate and they took a look and here's what they found that those men who did develop prostate cancer, when you biopsy their prostate and you compare uh, uh, how aggressive the cancer was, how many blood vessels are feeding the cancer, those uh, uh, men who had more tomato sauce um, per week over the course of the month actually had fewer blood vessels, all right? This is anti-androgenic seen in pathology in a research study that really makes a very strong case and that's really why this was published in the journal of the National Cancer Research in the journal of the National Cancer Research Institute um, that um, that foods, the foods that we eat, actually can have a meaningful correlation with uh, diseases that we care about. So for men, prostate cancer. Now there's a there's a similar study for women in breast cancer, and the reduction was almost about forty percent in a clinical uh, study looking at association. Now remember, I just told you uh, about uh, cooking the tomatoes. This has been studied too. How long do you have to um, change a tomato to so it actually is available? Well, you know, you actually uh, get better bioavailability um, by simmering at 190 degrees. That's simmering, not boiling. 212 is boiling. And two minutes, you've actually converted about half of what you want to do. At three minutes, you've really transformed a lot. You get a lot more bioavailability. You've really kind of supercharged it. Now, we've actually studied this in the human body as well. If you cook tomatoes in water, right? That, I don't know who cooks tomatoes in water. I cook my tomatoes in olive oil by making a sauce. But then you would actually take a look um, uh, at the uh, you'll, the temperature will go up, lycopene will be changed, it will be absorbed in the bloodstream. But then you compare how much is, a, is of lycopene is in the blood from tomato sauce cooked in water compared to olive oil. The oil actually has a lot more. Now, why is that? About three times, three times more. It's because lycopene is what we call a fat soluble molecule. Lycopene um, is kind of like soap. It doesn't dissolve very well in regular water, but it'll dissolve in soapy water. And when I say fat soluble, I mean, it doesn't like to dissolve that readily in regular water, but it'll dissolve in oil really easily. So tomatoes and olive oil simmered over a period of time. What is, what is that? Mediterranean cuisine, all right? So Nona was right. When she said, eat, you know, have my pasta with my tomato sauce, um, it's actually cooked in a healthy way. 
So this is, again, food is medicine. We can actually study it, um, not just looking at the food to say, here's my superfood. We're actually able to study the food, ask what's in it, look at the human, look at that and, and see how do we study that and look at the correlations. This is really what food is medicine is. I'm actually one of the people that not only um, uh, talks about food and health, but actually does the kind of study as well. By the way, what kind of olive oils um, do you want to use? Because olive oils, olives contain healthy anti-angiogenic cancer starving polyphenols. One of them is called um, hydroxytyrosol. So how many olive oils are out there? Well, there's a lot of different olive oils. Which one would you want to pick? One of the olive oils from one of these three olives. So olive oil monovarietal. So when I go to the store, I actually go to the middle aisles, right? And I look for olive oil. What do you, most people do? Just grab the one that they are familiar with. Here's what I do. I pick up each of the uh, bottles and I look at the side and I look for monovarietal to see if there's any, um, uh, it tells you what type of olive the olive oil is pressed from. And these three, Mariolo from Italy, Coronecchi from Greece, and Picuel from Spain, the Coronecchi and, and Picuel, Greek and Spanish olive, olives are quite common. So you can find those in almost any uh, uh, food store you'd go to these days. Um, that's the kind that I used to simmer with my tomatoes because I want extra polyphenols actually from the olive uh, oil as well. So again, um, think about how we know the Mediterranean cuisine is actually healthy. Now we're getting down to the science of it as well. Oh, what about the tomatoes? Is there a tomato that's got higher amounts of lycopene? Absolutely. San Marzano tomatoes, uh, cherry tomatoes have a lot of lycopene. Those black tomatoes that only appeared on the market in the last few years, a lot of lycopene. And, and ironically, tangerine tomatoes aren't red. They don't look like they'd have a lot of red lycopene dye, but they already have the lycopene in a form where it's chemically transformed. You don't need to cook those. If you eat, eat those like an apple, you'll get a lot of lycopene absorbed. It's already got the, the chemical form of lycopene your body can readily absorb. So if you wanna make a salad and you wanna get that lycopene, make it with a tangerine tomato, which is this kind of yellowish tomato. So again, you know, a lot of people talk about food and health in kind of like a textbooky sort of way, preachy sort of way. I love to talk about it in a way that we can all relate to because we're going to the store, summertime's coming up, we're gonna see a ton of tomatoes. Which one are you gonna pick? Hopefully you'll think about this. 